Hello there fellow NPCs, I am Corbin Scythe and today we're going to continue to play the ladder. It is, we are in the middle of Marianne's paths. Well, let's see how far into the path we are actually. Uh, branch and this is wrong. For some reason the relationship uh, tracker always activates when we start up the game. Let's see the branching tree. We are 34% in, we have skipped quite a bit. Uh, so here we are. And it is, ah, let's see, here we are, this is in the middle, we are about 75% through Marianne's path here, yeah, and it is getting late, and I don't quite remember what happened in the last episode, but we will catch up soon enough, most likely we were just talking about uh, how to fix up the mansion uh, while being at the mansion, right, we were jump attacked by uh, your not girlfriend from back in high school or whatever that was private kind of school uh, but yeah now let's get back to the letter I can't wait for this day to be over <laughs> from the mansion and through Anselm I rode with them in silence but as soon as we hit city proper I'd ask to be dropped off and bid them good night I thought that It'd be best if I didn't stay too long in, confi in confined spaces with either Mrs. or Mr. Wright. Both seemed to cause me serious trouble and if the, pro if the project had been any less interesting or grand, I would have dropped it without a, a second thought. Would have, shouldn't it have, won't. I assure them that my place isn't that far off and I have to fight off the urge to roll my eyes and the groan when whiskey throws me a little smirk. But even in my own home, peace is elusive, as is sleep. I lie awake, thinking of what I saw in that mansion. Now let's see what the journal had to say. And then we shall dead. Yeah, we saw this, we read this. Yeah, we read this, why is that? Jeez. Oh, who I saw? If I so much as hear a single whisper from her? If I so much as see a wisp of her hair, I'm afraid I'd, I'll go mad. But none of that happens. And it makes me feel hollow. Mm. For two nights, I've had trouble sleeping. But it's only in one morning, when fatigue has already let, let me rest, that I'm reminded of what terrifies me so. In my restless dreams, I see that mirror, the one in the study, and in it I see her, I see them. Lorraine and Hannah. Oh, right. Yeah, Hannah was like a perfect uh, copy of uh, Lorraine. And yeah. So yeah. Uh huh. Hannah and Lorraine. Poor pathetic Marianne. Work, work, work. Well, that was horrifying. Work, work, work. She'll work herself to death. See? See? She doesn't listen. That's all she did. Look at what happened to me. They talk among themselves with cruel smiles and venomous tongues. Or rather, two themselves, two heads, one body. Ooh, they don't even share a body. Couldn't really see that. It's kind of difficult to see, honestly. A horrible mockery of these women, as if they were uh, the one and the same. More's the pity. Life goes on and goes out, and she doesn't even see it. Do you think she'll even realize when she's kicked the bucket herself? <laughs> when they say a person has a hard time telling when they're in a dream, it was true often enough. Even with a bizarre sight, even with the obvious implication that this isn't real, I can't help but feel the stress. Likely. Is that any way to live at all? She might as well be dead. Cruel fate that she's alive and I'm... well. Whoo! Wow! This ghost is going for the personal attacks. Though they speak in each other's ears, tones low and hushed, I can still hear them as clear as day. They whisper per... Their whispers pervade the air, heavy and oppressive. They bury and dig into my head like tiny maggots, worming their way into my, sc my skull. 
It was only then that they take notice of my presence. Eyes turn towards me and I can feel, and I can only feel small under their scrutiny. Caricature smiles etch on their faces, mimicking each other grotesquely. But dude, this has such a Tommy vibe to it. Oh, Marianne! How long have you been standing there, dearie? Come join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Oh, I think you will bite. Unless you ask, that is. Oi. Have you been looking at us? Spying? How scandalous. Such a naughty girl. I'm sure you were just waiting for something lewd to happen, weren't you? This is very uncomfortable. You know she will not admit it. She thinks it wrong. You've said it so yourself. Yes. She thought me wrong, impure, abnormal, because I loved her. My breath hitches, and I open my mouth to protest, but they stop me, screeching. The mirror that holds some cracked lines spidering across its surface. Oh, there is a crack in the hair in the screen. Oh, Lord, that is, it's gonna grow. It's gonna attack me. Here's one more crack. More cracks. Is this supposed to look like the computer screen? Do not lie. We know the gluttonous thoughts you try to deny, girl. All those desires you bury beneath that sickening guilt. You act the martyr when you turn the bed you lie in into your own hedonistic hell. You are nothing but a tainted soul with filth-stained flesh held together by falsehood and pride. They look livid. And when it looks like they would lunch. <gasps> I wake, feeling like the wind has been knocked out of me. With a groan I squint and find a certain fluff ball sitting on my chest looking as pleased as punch. She is the overlady of the cats, queen of despair and destruction of nice furniture. Really? Even uh, do that stupid shit to your cat? Uh, I mean, being such a super nerd. Though I can't stay mad at her majesty because it feels like she did something good this time. I was having a nightmare, but I can't even remember what it was about. Trying to recall leaves a terrible pit in my stomach. Maybe... It's probably better that I don't remember. Good morning, Barothio. Who's a good kitty? Are you gonna freak out too? Are you hungry? Is that why you woke me up? A content purr comes from my sweet there before she jumps off the bed and trots towards the kitchen. On the other hand, it takes me a bit more before I roll out of bed and start my day. Morning before work is always a quite affair. Shower first. Then a mug of coffee and a bowl of oats. Sometimes I do stretches, and I always check my work email. The rights will be moving into the mansion today. I don't think the paperwork is officially done yet, but it isn't too far-fetched to think they were al allowed to start their move despite that. Rich people like them will always find a way to get what they want, after all. I'll be leaving you again today, Beth. So you behave and make sure not to shred up my new covers, okay? <laughs> and don't worry, I didn't forget tomorrow is Black Cat Day, so I'll throw you a party. It's a Black Cat Day? Okay, I'll have to check that out. But only if you behave like a proper lady. She barely give me a glance as I say that before going back to her own food. Cats. Still better than humans most of the time. Too bad I have to work with humans. Huh. Wednesday 26. Oh, construction work. The place is already busy as soon as I get there. The foreman, one that I've recommended to the rights for his work ethic, is early as usual. Already he's instructing men here and there with the bigger loads. I have no chance to talk to him as Mrs. Wright appears and greets me with a smile. Mrs. Wright. I hope everything has been to your liking thus far. Good morning, Marianne. It has been delightful and these men have been very helpful. Look at all this. It's so busy here. I'm getting tired just looking at them go. <laughs> Jeez, that is uh, such a high class comment. No complications so far with the movers or the previous owners of the mansion, I hope? 
If anything, the only one being problematic is Luke, if I'm to be honest. <laughs> he can be such a diva, but I do like that about him. Oh, do you now? She stops looking she stops looking at the upper landing where Mr. Wright comes through with two other movers and the mirror from the study. Oh, oh do be careful with that mirror. We wouldn't want anyone getting hurt because of broken glass. Okay, so you're getting rid of the mirror. Let's see here. When did that happen? Did you see that horrific thing? Uh, in the mirror. During the open house, Hannah repressured state in the cellar of the mansion. The rights also met the interior design, but this is pleased with her husband's flirtatious attitude. I don't think that's. I think it's later. Hmm. I guess we don't. I mean, that was not a scene. And never written down in the journal. Hmm. Yeah, this is far later. Yeah. So, I think uh, Hana already saw the ghost in the mirror. And so did Marianne. So getting rid of the mirror should be a good thing. <laughs> Why are you even having it carried around? Oh, it's Luke's re uh, re uh, Luke is the one getting rid of it. Oh? Mm, you did say you didn't want the mirror and I mm, keep getting distracted by it. Oh no. He is seeing something in the mirror too. Like Naked ladies, all the other ladies being naked, something like that. If I'm going to turn the study into my office, I'd rather not have it there. Or you are being haunted by the ghost in there too. Jeez, of course. And he's just, uh, does not care about it. Where can we put this? Well, you are not putting it in our room. Yeah, she's seen the ghost too. Why don't you go, I don't know, put it in the wine cellar for now? Yeah, they want to... Figure out oh. to full store it in the attic or somewhere else later, yes? Yeah, they want to get rid of it. You heard her, boys. To the cellar it goes. Mush. Wow. The fact that no one is talking about it is absolutely... horrifying. That is how you do horror. Everyone is afraid of telling everyone else about it for being seen as a freaking insane person. The movers bring down the mirror one step at a time, no matter how much the man tells them to hurry. An unsettling feeling grows in my stomach as I see a reflection in a bloody thing. And I look away, not wishing to risk anything. If I see Lorraine's image in the mirror now, I wouldn't know what to do. I no wouldn't know what I'd do. I don't have the luxury of privacy right now, and I am not going to break down in front of all these people. As soon as we go into the kitchen, I realize I'm holding my breath. I let out a sigh of relief when I think nobody's looking, and I go back to the task at hand. Is that why she was hearing the screaming from the cellar as well, because the mirror is there? It'll be a terribly busy day. And there's no need for me even to think of anything else. I talk you with the foreman. Fill him in on which room is which. I seem, it seems I'm doomed to not get any significant work done without being interrupted when it comes to these particular clients, however. Marianne, dear, have you had breakfast yet? <laughs> Always breakfast with you. Lovely. Well, I do believe it would be considered brunch at this hour. Oh, yes. Mrs. Wright, I, I... You must join me. Johans has already been breaking in the kitchen, as they say. Mm. I do not see the others settling down for a meal anytime soon. Someone might as well enjoy the food while it's hot. And that someone might as well be us. <laughs> I should say no. I really must say no. But the way her smiles at me makes it difficult to do so. Look at how ridiculous I'm being. Acting like a silly nervous schoolgirl with a crush? It's just brunch, and who am I to say no to a client? It would be impolite to do so. 
It's not like I'm going to agree because of anything other than propriety. I'm not agreeing just because she battered her eyelashes, her pretty eyelashes at me. If you insist. Yeah, you have a crush on her. It really isn't any of those. But if it is something about, but it's something about her eyes rather. She looks like she needs a good talk. A friend. And although I'm not supposed to be chummy with my clients, there's no harm in pretending, right? And now we're back to the breakfast. Of course, I've been wrong on many occasions before. Maybe there is plenty of harm in pretending that I care. Because pretending I care might lead to actually caring. Being alone in the same room as the missus leaves me reeling, as I find myself paying too much attention to her. It seems so borderline unhealthy how much I'm getting obsessed, even if it's just by looking. And, if she, and it's the little insignificant things that I noticed, like the way she plays with her hair, or how she smooths down her dress. Up higher. Yeah. Oh, no. Whiskey's annoying voice in the other room helps me pull me, pull me back to the ground. I'm just looking, aren't I? I know that someone like her wouldn't even look at someone like me. Still, there's some time to turn around this bad decision. I'd really like to thank you for inviting me to breakfast, Mrs. Wright. But I already ate, <laughs> so I should really go back to work. Jeez. Nonsense! You arrived so early, you must not have gotten a proper meal. Sit, sit! I'd situate us in the dining hall, but it is a mess right now. Her concern is sweet, as is her smile. But I am really not here for idle chit chat, something I keep forgetting. Yeah. We're both be we're both distracted when the food arrives, and it's enough for me to stay, at least until the meal is over. No more, no less, has to be polite. Thankfully, the conversation stares into a topic I'm comfortable with. Work. This goes on for a bit, and I can't be more relieved. Most people don't understand, calling me a workaholic, but I chose to work in a field I'm enthusiastic about. So what if I if so what if my career is also my hobby? But no, really, how have you liked it so far? Oh, it has been wonderful, believe me. Everything is going smoothly too. It has been a long time since I've worked on something in this grand a scale. Nowadays, everyone is about condos mm -hmm. and flats, living in the city yeah. where every room is an identical box. Believe me, this is very refreshing. We lived in a condo before this, Marianne. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean any insult. I. It's fine, sweetie. Look at you, all frazzled. I was just pulling your leg. Luke wanted that penthouse when we got married, and you can thank him for purchasing this place as well. Yeah, exactly. Wait, doesn't she own the house? I'm pretty sure. I have no business with it, though. It's theirs to hatch out. But apparently, the momentary confusion had been visible on my face. Don't be fooled. I'm just the treasury. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be able to make a purchase this grand without his seal of approval. Eh, uh, right, that's how it is, huh? I see. That's it. That's all you have to say. <laughs> yes, what else is there to it? Without warning, this nice friendly chat developed into something horrible. Something sad. But I really don't know what to say, Mrs. Wright. We were talking of no topic in particular, and... Luke. We were talking about Luke. About him not eating breakfast with you? About him treating me as if I were some treasury! Yeah. This is the exact same scene, but seen from the other side of the conversation. Despite my general dislike of the upper class, I sometimes feel pity for them. They may have all the money in the world where material things aren't a problem, but they don't even see what they become, where they ended up, or what they've done most of the time. They're shut in by their own trap, forced to play along with society's expectations, and do anything to stay where they are, and to keep what they have. A world where even people feel or are treated like they are mere possessions. When someone is, on, is at the top, the only way for them to go is down. I worked with many Hanas and Lukes and whiskies, but I've never been one of them. 
I don't pretend to understand their world any deeper than that. I merely know what I've been witnessed before. She looks lost, speechless at how she betrayed herself. My pity for her for the likes of her returns. My pity for her for the likes of her returns. Nothing but pity moves me as I speak before she can say anything else that might ruin or break her. I won't speak a word, Mrs. Wright. Not only am I contractually obliged to, <laughs> it would also go against my principles. This is no one else's business but your own, and it should be kept between the two of you. And whoever you wish to seek counsel from. Please, Marianne. You have to understand. These sort of affairs. If anyone were to know this, they could just twist it and we'll be ruined. All I ask for is your silence on the matter. Oh, right, because we asked her. We didn't tell her. Oh, that's very nice that it's... They, you remember that. Ooh, right. Because we did get the choice to either ask for her silence or tell her to be silent. Mm. The way she has practically begs me to keep quiet about it is disheartening. I have no plans of speaking about anything I hear, especially if it is about their private affairs. But the way she looks at me, the way she just expects some sort of fallout because of this, makes my heart clench. Well, I'm keeping that information confidential as well. It's not like I have any other choice, do I? Thank you. When the last of the food and drink is gone, the door opens as if on cue. Madam, the photographer from Luxury oh. Living is here. This was a wonderful meal, Marianne. You're free to return to your duties. Zack is here. I must excuse myself. It was my pleasure. And thank you for the food as well. She stands up to... Uh, she stands to... She stands to up? She stands up to leave. And all I want to do is uh, reassure her again. To prove that I am someone she can trust. So when she looks back my way. I didn't fight, her, fight the smile that found its way on my face. I feel giddy. But the feeling dies down afterwards as I sober up. Oh well. Back to work. Yeah, and now that Hana is with Sack, we are gonna run into the ghost again. Question is, is it the same ghost as everyone else, or is it going to be the Lorraine ghost? Soon enough, I find myself down in the kitchen where the right butler has returned to. He's already claimed the space and telling movers to back off, and none dares to question his proclamation either. My kitchen. No kinder allowed. No children Kinder allowed. Running around with knives, especially. We do not want any accidents to happen now, do we? Good? Good. Gee, they're too strict. They are movers. They need to move shit around. I mean, it is a knife-wielding German standing there. I don't think anybody would be insane enough to refuse his request. I hope I meet the age restriction. Or at least the height restriction, <laughs> because I'm asking to be let in here. You are allowed inside, McCulloch, but not the little ones. What do you mean, the little ones? Who are the little ones? I shake off my head and I roll my eyes as I. Uh, my eyes is all I. Mm, I shake off my head and I roll of my eyes is all I give him. It's not like I'm going to be of any trouble to him. I just need to look around, get my bearings. The breakfast had me been distract. Mm. The breakfast had been distraction enough. I don't even want to think about what we just talked about. I just need to get my head straight and get back to work. The movers work efficiently, even when they are left alone, and they do quick work of their responsibilities. They head for me, come standing in the doorway to consult me on this or that, and I have to go out to help every now and then. But they pretty much have everything up to standards. They skip lunch entirely, not even realizing when they do so. Nevertheless, all is well as the butler gets to heating up uh, the leftovers bubble and squeak from breakfast and makes a generous batch of fish and chips for them. Most likely, sim most likely simple in comparison to what he serves to the rights, but well done nonetheless. That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? 
It's an idle observation more than anything. I thought as they are. Preoccupy me. If there are any left, one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them. Even my husband. And he's American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a German and American living in Britain. Okay. I really do hate getting so close up and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. It is obvious to me that I've gotten my priorities all wrong when I can't help but think about what I've heard, what I've learned about the right couple. These things have a way of creeping up on a person. Thoughts, ideas, whether they are fact or fiction. They creep up and fester, crawl and writhe in a way that twists. I hear giggling, delighted and mocking. They creep up and... The sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arm causes me to freeze and hiss. Don't! I have expect her to be there. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder. Get the fuck off me! Whiskey! It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. <laughs> but it's just whiskey. Don't do that again. Ever. I don't like being scared, though I don't believe uh, in the likes of spooks. Being startled is not on top of the things. It's not on top of the list of things Marianne liked. Luckily for him, lucky for him, he had nothing within reach, or he would have gotten a friendly turns with something like a rolling pin. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has Johans been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, Brother Gurium? The butler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rights, aside from vague amusement. There must have been something in there, though, judging from Mr. Wright's own current content look. The expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost... cruel. But neither of them spoke, as even Johannes leaves the room to serve the workers at a late lunch. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? You? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Yeah, but you are the one who removed the mirror, so you are seeing some shit too. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. <laughs> the voice for Luke Wright is so ridiculous at times. <sighs> it, just go, it just makes him such a silly character. It's great, but it's so off-putting at the same time. That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said... I was just thinking. It would be a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing, a de dead person isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means there would be such things as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything oh. weird here? She is uh, questioning around. A simple enough question on the surface, yet I noticed the man stiffen at the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't if I wasn't watching if I wasn't watching his reaction intently, but in his eyes I see something dangerous. It depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. 
I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women lurking about then? Oh, you have seen something. A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over well. Not that I know of, but I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. <sighs> I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you report it immediately. Oh. He went personal there. He is reaching out. Shit. I think that goes without saying. The concern you have on, a, on the talk of security is quickly gone. It's arrogant smug smirk returns, if a bit subdued. Whatever smarmy remark or innuendo he has at the end ready, he has at the ready never comes slow. As voices from the dining hall ring out. <laughs> okay, so all four of us is in the house now. That would be the magazine photo photographer, I presume. As always, Mrs. Wright talks in such a kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photographer too. Hearing them, hearing them though, seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least, if this small scowl is anything to go by. You see, jealous. Uh, try to lighten the mood or ask if he's alright. They are both about making friends with him. Wow. Are you going to tell me that all, all of his bad things, that all, everything that is wrong with Luke is about his being insecure? Is that all there is going to be a down about? Hey, are you alright there, Whiskey? You're looking like you need a serious drink. Yeah, I was afraid of that. What is it that you want to do then? Film. Documentaries mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing, actually. I'm fine. Just a bit winded from all that moving about. It's been a long day. Hmm. And the day's not over yet. So if you can excuse the bloodness, you either shape up to help or ship out back to your room and let us do the rest of the work. Wow. What the hell? He hesitates, eyes locked firmly on the door that led to the dining hall. Even now, we can still hear as Mrs. Wright and the photographer shit chat in between shots. It's not my place to say this, but she really does seem to care a lot about you. You know? There's no need to remind me of that. Hmm. A strange smile appears on his face before he shuts his eyes and sighs. Tell the workers that you're all dismissed early. Oh. That's nice and all, whiskey. But we really shouldn't just take off. Delays aren't a good thing when it comes to big projects like these. The sooner we tackle certain issues, the better. And I trust you can take care of these issues another day. <laughs> Don't make me ask again, Mint. Just tell the others they can go home early. And to not worry, they'll still get paid the remaining hours. I don't know what prompted this. What the air is putting on, though. I know better than to meddle and proud and proud further. Besides... Fine. You're the boss. Walking out of the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go while... Uh, what will go while under his roof. Mrs. Wright and the photographer are still far too busy in a conversation to notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. 
Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fonsi very much. Hmm. People don't like a film about colors. <laughs> Baby Blue. I suppose they would have liked Blue Baby a lot more. That's so cute. Going to the foyer has me stumble upon the family butler once more, who raised a brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. No. Oh? The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. My ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get there. Granted, there's way there were some difficulties at first, because the driver didn't know where the Ermingard mansion is. He tried to have us hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble I didn't care about, and the butler didn't understand. How can they not? But as soon as we told him it's the haunted mansion over at the Anstam village, he knew just the place, and finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. Now let's see. To keep her mind off things that haunted her, Marianne McCullough focused on assisting the rights during their move. In later that afternoon, the, the ah, right in, during their move in. Later that afternoon, she was seen chatting with Luke Wright, who then damned, demanded she and the rest of the crew take an early leave. All the way back to all the back way to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. <laughs> it gives them the willies too. I would have loved to snap at him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossoms in the forefront of my mind. One that has somehow bothered me greatly. More than exasperation over whiskies and his project, or wanting all of it to stop. There has been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. Worse. I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damn the... Ah, Lord, the actual Irish is difficult. Damn the earthy. Loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago. And it doesn't... And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? Tuesdays are for karaoke, Wednesdays, improv. Usually, it's these four guys who did hilarious games, the one with Irish drinking songs and are always a crowd favorite. Though I love a good laugh, stand-up comedy isn't my thing, and without Cam and Aruna or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. I need you for something. It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. I'd probably have been kicked out of the other places by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all they would do is give me an easy smile and shake of his head, even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. Lee, is that you? Jeez, he's just making comebacks everywhere. He's some Asian guy, and I'm pretty sure I've seen him before a couple of times, although he never talks to anyone else except G. That's Ashton. The girls used to be all over him too, but they always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. All right, all right. Yeah. What is it? Jeez, who the fuck is this guy? Lee is just everywhere. He's the priest, he's the police officer. He is the bartender. Who are you? Are you just a fun background character that just, you know, for the fun of it shows up? Or are you a spectral entity that comes and is everywhere? Or is it going to be super normal and your family just have uh, a lot of sh same looking children? <laughs> I love this. Do you need someone to help you get home? 
Bartender, pour the wine. I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. A uh. wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hope of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even if my, even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because what little sense I have left knows I'd sooner take the floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bottle from a sober man. But that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head, just like I knew he would, before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? Are you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one to really chat with, I would have gone home, or gone to sleep on the bar right there, there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn Firm case. Luxborn Firm case? Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. What? Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around and claiming they're the Illuminati. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? Their talk would have interested me, would have kept my attention, if I gave a damn. But in my current state, I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. All these worlds are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sounds that is just a pub. And it would have stayed that way, perhaps even drowned, if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. Hmm. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. <laughs> that smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a wad of cash on the counter after having too much whiskey, Kansas tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst ah. you can imagine. Really now? Luke fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, they're still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck? Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is this my talk about Luke fucking right? I'm hearing it. Eh? <laughs> Private conversation here, lady. I work for them, man. I can tell you things you don't even think you know. Yeah, it's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes, she's clean. And she might be able to help you with your uh, predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? See, you have a little faith in me, why don't you? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come running to me for business. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven, can't miss me. <laughs> I'm like Shorty over here. What's it that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Jeez. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I move directly behind him and use the top of his head as an armrest. Oh, wow. But when he shakes me off, I plop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. Yeah, I agree. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. Giantess, dude, she's not. She's my size. We are literally the same height. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. 
connected with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, are you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Interior designer. Thank you. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McAuliffe. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhymes. <laughs> it really doesn't. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? <laughs> or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. You wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions. <laughs> Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. She, she got, uh, she, she got that Irish blood in her, all right. Absolutely. One moment he's an absolute dickhead, and then he's acting like an actual decent human being. The next, I just can't figure him out. He, he never acts like a decent human being. He never does. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. And I'm not just saying that because I think Hans Brett or anything. Luke is a catch dude, they both are. But I really cannot for the love of all things only see how they even work out together. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Hmm? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being peck pe peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. Arseholes. A giggle bubbles up and I press my cheek against the cool countertop with my head eyes shut tight. Just because. Eventually cracking one eye open. Just in case they thought I fell asleep. I grin at Holmes. So, Holmes. I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Oh, jeez. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexy as sin to boot. Marianne. Not a private detective, then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Mmm, <laughs> pants. I take the pants off of... Ah, here we go. Sleeping? Sleeping? I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I have been right now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave... you what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What are you on about? What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This will be dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe spare time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of the, the wave of despair that comes off over the both of them is palpable. If feelings had a taste, it'd be bitterer than the bear I'm full of. And it gets me thinking. Well, thinking doesn't get me far with too much shite in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. 
Something, something. As ocht day! No wonder Mr. Right likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is. Rotten bloke. Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something. <laughs> Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. That is such a cool way to do this because now she knows that Santos knows that something Isabella is that something is up. She goes to her, uh, they talk shit out, and then they go to Zachary. Oh, that's cool. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Before I get another word out, there's a hands on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. I quickly slap his hands away. Best I can, and send in the foulest look I can muster. Take your hands off me, pipsqueak. I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from VRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was some joke, or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. When rich snobs give you that face, no wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay, <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. Yeah. And he really is pale. Paler than before, at least. I can see the girls turning in his head on overtime. Suddenly, he shoves a card in my hand. Ashton Frey, Detective Inspector, CID. Ashton Frey at Luxburn.Police.UK On it, on it, his name, Ashton Frey and his number. But he has a second thought as he grabs it from me and slips it into my pocket. <laughs> You're cute, pretty boy. But I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if you see anything suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is. Right, 999. Good. Anyway, I have to run. See you, G. The guy... <laughs> the guy... The guy is quick on his feet, already up uh, up and at him, as soon as the number leaves his lips. Watching him as he maneuvers through the crowd of other pub goers is enough to tire me out. Fast as he can, he's at the door and he throws us a smile, and that's all we get before he's gone, just like that. Oi, what about your drink, boy? I'll go put it on your tab then. Holmes boy always like that, G? Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. <laughs> yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. Hmm. Now let's see what we have written here. The interior designer once again drank her frustrations away at the crawl bar. No, that's not what it's called, that's what it's, uh, what it's named. All bit heavily intoxicated, she was seen chatting with Ashton Frey, a detective inspector working for the LPD, about Luke Wright, before abruptly leaving. The, te the detective left her his calling card. Swimming in cocktails. In alcohol there's truth and drunken ramblings. Mumbling asleep, he thanks. He doze off on the spot, face press on the counter. But that is where I will <laughs> cut off for today's episode. Uh, we re got a lot of things going on in this episode. Well, not a lot, but uh, some threads. 
are starting to cross into each other. So, where we go from here, we'll only have to wait to find out. And, if you want to watch anything else that I've been playing, you can find it at the bottom of the screen. And remember, yes, because you're not the main character doesn't mean you're not important. Goodbye, everyone.